recording now okay cool hey guys so um as you can see from the the title um this this video is going to focus on how to design flyers that actually sell now i have a lot of experience designing flyers trifolds um uh, promotional material of, of of different kinds billboards um etc um for um for different kinds of businesses different types of uh, different size businesses um, in various industries and so I've, I've learned a couple of things and I'm going to try to share um, some of that insight uh, with you um, I had a I had a conversation with a, with the lady uh, a, a, a few days ago she uh, she runs a carpet cleaning business um, she runs a carpet cleaning business and she was telling me that that she was dealing with a few things um, she, first she struggled um, finding a, a a good reliable graphic designer, um, somebody that was actually versatile enough to do what she needed instead of just pulling a bunch of like clip art type of work. Um, anyway, so she struggled finding somebody that was good. She was struggling finding some someone someone that was good and affordable for her, um, someone that she could, you know that she could afford, um, and. And then once she actually got it done, it wasn't really what she expected. Um, so she went back, they redid it, they resigned, they redesigned it, and then it was something that she wanted. Um, and once it was designed, once it was, once she was happy with it, she um, she went, you know, she went to the post office and she prepaid so that they could mail it to to different markets that she's trying to promote to, that she's trying to reach and get uh, get more and grow her business. Um, anyway, so that kind of got me thinking that as as nice as she is, as as you know, she came to me almost complaining about the graphic designer. Now I don't know the graphic designer. I do have some issues with the design itself. Um, I think I think a good graphic designer um, should have known better than to let the client dictate how the design should look. But at the same time, a graphic designer is no more than, um, let's say, you hire someone to paint your house. Uh, you, there's there's a difference, right? An interior designer or a um, a lifestyle home decorator, um, they'll tell you what to do, if for the the goal that you want, right? Like you you tell them, I want my house to have a certain feel. I want it to be chic. I want it to be elegant. Whatever the case may be, and then it's their job to know what you want, right? To know how, what to do and how to deliver that goal that you want. But, you know, so that's an interior decorator. A graphic designer, as, as for as talented as they could be, a graphic designer is nothing more than uh, a painter, right? You call a painter and you, you, you sometimes you provide them the paint that you've already chosen and purchased. Sometimes, you just tell them the color, you, you pick from a palette and they go buy it, they come home and they'll paint all the, your walls, they paint the outside, but they're only painting what you tell them. So, and, and so that you have to, a lot of businesses don't realize um, the difference, right? There's a, the difference between a, a graphic designer, a painter and a marketer or an interior decorator, right? There's a, there, there's a huge difference. So a lot of businesses come to graphic designers and they dictate exactly what they want. And then when they don't sell, when their flyers uh, um, uh, um, do horribly, then they go back and they blame the business. They blame the designer, um, which hurts the designer's future business, you know, from the reviews, the reference, etc. I've seen that happen many times. So in this case, as, as nice as this lady is, um, I don't think she realized un uh, until I kind of talked to her a little bit of what she had done she is she, she i mean she did that she dictated what she wanted on the flyer not really knowing what was needed in the flyer and then because of that um you know her flyer didn't do didn't perform so she uh, she lost a lot of money she's i think i think it was almost almost um i think she said almost two thousand dollars um almost eight hundred eight hundred on the service of the design and then and then in the print of the flyers and then she spent about another thousand dollars or so in the delivery, in the in the pack, in the um, stamping and mailing and all that stuff. 
something like that um anyway she spent a lot of money and i think she generated like two or three sales out of it which ended up being only a couple hundred dollars worth of revenue and that's gross sales so she you know so and i think that's coming a couple of years ago i had learned of this lady she is and again it's just a coincidence but she it was a lady and she owned a cleaning business in delaware or somewhere and she had spent almost five thousand dollars five thousand dollars and the same thing a trifold um in the design that she printed a lot of them she paid for the for the for the mailing um and i think in her case she has spent five thousand dollars and she sold i think it was only like two like two or like an hourly job for, you know to where like somebody calls you for like just you know extra extra cleaning help around the house so i think i think on that one she ended up only selling uh, two or three hours worth of service so like less than a hundred bucks i think it was that she that she generated from the almost five thousand dollars so i mean that almost killed her business as you can imagine she spent a lot of money um but again part of that is that is that you don't know what you don't know right so if you go to a graphic designer thinking that they are an interior interior decorator you tell them i want i want my house to be chic um i want my house to be modern or have a rustic feel um, etc there's a difference between who you will need to hire for that right the, you you if you call a painter all they're gonna do is they're gonna know how to paint but you have to tell them what yeah and where and how um, others right uh, so as a business you need to know the difference anyway so enough of that um, I'm going to cover a little bit of to like like what I know what I've learned um, but before I do that uh, let me show you i have a a checklist here um so we'll be going down through this list real quick um and a little by little we'll walk our way down and i'll explain each one um so first thing is the marketing macarena now i call it the macarena because you cover you know you cover your whole you know your whole body now different parts of the body and and this thing that i call the the, the your personal brand identity so with the anatomy of your personal brand, um, you cover the head, um, you know, you bring, I, I broke it down, but let me explain this. When you are in a service business, if you do carpet cleaning, if you're a plumber, if you're an electrician, um, if you're a painter, uh, a house cleaner, janitorial, you do commercial cleaning, um, you are in la landscaper, it doesn't matter what it, what it is, construction, it doesn't matter. If, if any part of your business, if the service has to be performed or delivered or completed by um, a person, an individual, then by default, you are in the service business. If you are in the service business, um, give me one second. If you are, if you are in the if you are in the service business, then by default, you are also in the personal branding business, meaning you have a business, you deliver a product, you know, you may deliver, you, so you have a business, you may deliver a product or a service, but at the end of the day, when you promote yourself, you're not promoting um, the business or the product, you're promoting yourself, you're promoting the business owner, you're promoting the, the team, um, the individuals that make up the service, that make up the business. Um, so, and that's kind of why I've developed a personal brand anatomy. Now with the personal brand anatomy, um, you can see that we have the head, the heart, gestures, wallet, and feet. So everything that I do when it comes to outbound, right? Um, there's a difference between inbound and outbound when you, anything that you do has to address the logic, right? Um, some people think with their wallets. Some people think with efficiency that maybe, maybe if they already have a contract somewhere else, that you know you have to make it easy so they convert over um you know that's something that that i think i think telephone companies you know like t-mobile and at&t and all of them have gotten really good at you know they, they pay for it they pay to pick your contract they pay to pay off your phone that kind of thing so that they can convert over um uh so again the conversion the logic you have to address that uh the emotions the gestures and i'll go over each one of those um but essentially, I, I just want to I just want to read this to you. As you follow the ideas that I'm gonna give you and the 
um, and the design as you're designing your flyers or if you hire somebody like me or any other graphic designer, hopefully this helps you um, think of, of the things that need to be covered in an, in an ad, in a flyer, in a trifold. Um, anyway, the, the, um, the, you have to pair your efforts with this marketing Macarena. You have to reach their heart, their mind, their values, and generate the sale by being friendly to not only the head, but also the wallet. So I'll go over um, how I do that. I'm just going to keep this right here so that you guys have it. Um, and then I'm going to start off with the first one. Okay, so so we have the marketing Macarena. Now, again, I cover the person. If you're in the service business, you are in the personal branding business, right? It doesn't matter whether you're inbound or you're outbound. If you don't know what inbound is, or you don't know the difference between inbound and outbound, I will be doing a video uh, or a couple of videos because because inbound does cover a lot of things. Um, but I'll go over and break down what inbound is so that you understand it a little bit better. But the difference, essentially the big difference is that inbound is people com people coming to you because you are an expert. One way or another, whether it's through your efforts or referrals, people are coming to you. You're generating money, you're generating sales when you're asleep. Uh, outbound is you have to be awake and, and you have to either commit and do the time yourself of promoting. You have to make the effort, make the time, spend the money to go out there and promote. Maybe after you've after you're done cleaning, after you've done your electrical jobs, whatever the case may be, um, you're 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 either doing it yourself or you're paying someone to spend the time to go promote for you. It's called interruption marketing. Um, that's interruption, right? The outbound. You're going out there and be like, hey, you're raising your hand. Hey, hold on. Let me let me uh, let me tell you about myself. Let me let me tell you what I offer, and then, and then let me try to convince you to buy from me. Versus inbound is again you're just you're an expert already people know of you and they're coming to you they're interrupting you and then all you do is you just close the sale flyers trifolds um, postcards any type of mailer is not inbound it's outbound right you're sending it out you're interrupting someone's day and if you're um for the service businesses the marketing that you do flyers any of that you have to address the hard as much as the wallet People want to know who you are, right? So you are in the personal branding business. You have to brand yourself and brand your your, your team. You have to make you have to make your your business and your um, service personal. Um, okay, so that's one thing. Second thing is that, and I'll address that through the examples. Is every time that you are a that you're spending money to make a design, to make a flyer, to make a website. Um, you post something on Facebook, etc. You have to have one goal at a time. You can expect to be able to accomplish multiple things with through one effort. Like it just doesn't work that way. If, even even large companies or when people hire uh, people like us, people like me, um, we break it down so that it, 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 we're 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 multitasking and layering different efforts so that we are achieving multiple goals, but they're still they're still dissected separately and launched separately. They just happen to launch so that they overlap a little. Um, but as a small business, especially if you are doing it yourself, you can't aim to to sell a lot of value um, on many different things. So like I've seen that happen a lot where, where you have a business owner who, um, who just lists a lot of things, residential, commercial, um, crime scene cleaning everything all in one flyer they just cram it all up and, and then you can't do that like it, 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 it you're only hurting yourself it's better to split it up have different flyers different brochures different campaigns um, so that's what this is about so my first one and I'm gonna go through this example is uh, clip art never never ever use clip art um, this is and, and so I wanted to show you this one because this is a perfect example um, of what I what I was mentioning earlier of um, knowing who to hire, right? A, a, a graphic designer, a painter, or a decorator, a marketer, right? So I Googled, I literally just went to Google and searched um, a cleaning flyer template. Cleaning flyer template. So you can imagine, I'm thinking as a as a typical business owner, I'm good at cleaning, I'm good at 
I'm good at my at what I do, um, but I'm, I, I don't I don't I'm not good at I'm not a marketer, right? So if I if I type if I type that into Google and I get this as a result, I'm gonna think it's it's a good reliable template. It's a form. It's it's shown as a template, so I'm gonna use it, right? But is it the right template? So my 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 first rule, my my rule for for one of the things that I've seen in the worst ads. Uh, flyers is that they are using clipart. Never use clip clipart. Again, you have to make your branding personal. Um, part of being personal and part of segueing from outbound, from you interrupting to people seeing you as an expert, is them seeing you as an established expert, as an established company. Right? That you, they're not gonna hire you, and then you're gonna skim them off of a service. Um, they want to know that you're established. Part of that is looking professional. Using clipboard is never, ever, ever professional. Um, you know, the only I think the only time that it's that it's adequate to use clip clipboard is like through an an, an intra office memo. Um, you know, just something quick. You drop it in the corner of a, of a memo sheet, and that's it. But in, in a flyer, when you're trying to be personable, um, that is never okay. This ad, this flyer has a lot of bad things. Um, <clears throat> but I just wanted to use it as a, as an example of what I was mentioning between a painter and a, and a decorator, and then also the fact that clip clipboard just looks really bad. So that's that one. Um, jargon. So let me see. There was one. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Jargon. Jargon. So these are a few, um, a few examples of, of, you have to know your audience. So know your audience. I'll go over it. I'll go over uh, this one. But for example, look, look at this one. This one. I found this on Facebook and I think they have this in a postcard. Um, but there's a few a few things that are wrong with this. Okay, first of all, there's no branding. I, I'm assuming, right? I'm, as, I'm only assuming that Fusion Carpet Cleaning is the company name. Um, it, it seems like it could be, but again, at the end of the day, I'm assuming, right? Um, the services, carpet cleaning, upholstery, rug cleaning, car cleaning, steam cleaning, stain remover, and truck mount unit. So if I'm an edu if I'm an educated potential customer, I'm going to notice a few things right off the bat. And you have to assume your get your potential clients are educated clients, right? First, I'm assuming it's not clear to me who the business is. There's no website, there's no name, there's no there's no trademark logo, there's no anything. There's no name, there's no picture of the owner, there's nothing. That's one thing. Two the background image is very, very generic, um, very generic. <clears throat> uh, and three, if again, if I'm an educated potential customer, I'm going to notice that this guy or this person, I should say that this person ran out of things to list because they are they are essentially repeating a few things um, to me. If you are a carpet cleaner and you clean upholstery, right? You, you, you're, you don't have to list carpet cleaning, right? You don't have to also list and say that you do stain removing because in my opinion, I'm not a carpet cleaner, right? So I don't know the industry jargon and the differences, but as, as a, just as a general customer, to me, carpet cleaning, the reason why I call a carpet cleaner is so that they remove the stains, so that they remove the damage through traffic, the, all, all the dirtiness, the dirt, the buildup, the stains in my carpet or my my upholstery um so it, to me it seems like this guy just ran out of things to say um by adding and they added stain remover also truck mount so truck mount now i'm thinking okay this guy doesn't have a name i don't have a picture there's a number but there's no website there's no there's no social media i don't like i don't know everything seems very like very very cheaply done as far as the as far as the the, the flyer um so I'm, i already have my doubts and then on top of another adding a little confusion 
by making me think, what the hell is a truck mount unit? What is a truck mount unit? Should I care? Like, oh crap, okay, so now I need to know the difference. When I call someone, I need to ask who has a truck mount or who hasn't, right? So that's jargon. It's one of those things that the client, the potential client, doesn't need to know. Um, they, they don't. We don't need to know whether you're... Tr I would assume that every carpet cleaner has a truck mount service, right? Otherwise, how are they cleaning it? Who's pumping it? Where is the pump going to come from? Um, you know, like, even if there is a difference and you as a business owner know that there is a business difference or the service quality is a lot better or whatever the case may be, you don't mention that in a flyer because you're just adding confusion. So you have to know your audience and you have to know what's okay to say. And then we go back to um, having one goal at a time, right? So if you're going to do a flyer because you are interrupting someone, make that interruption as minimal as you can and only address and focus on one value proposition, one goal that you want from that interruption. Hey, my name is Fusion Carpet Cleaning and we do a bunch of different things. Here's a quick list of some of the random things that we do on top of general carpet cleaning, but I'm interrupting you today because we have a promotion going on. So here, save our flyer. Um, it expires, whatever. You have until then to give us a call. This, you know, etc. And that's what you would use a flyer for. This guy um, or this company, they just listed the things that I would already know. So they're interrupting me, telling me, hey, sorry to interrupt your day. Uh, we're fusion carpet cleaning. We clean carpets. We do carpet cleaning. We remove the stains from the carpets because we clean carpets. We're also cleaning upholstery. Anything that anything, um, anything with the surface uh, that is cleanable with a carpet machine, we clean. Here's my number. Oh, and by the way, we're truck mounted. Like that. That does you know. So there's a, there's a huge difference. So we go back to the personal branding. You have to make it personal. This is not at all personable. They, they, they don't know their audience. They're not addressing a single goal and they're adding jargon. Um, so again, I wanted to use this as an, as an example. Um, so know your audience. Let me see, I think there's another one. <sighs> One-time service. This one, I like this one. So, um, okay. So this one, the reason why I don't like this one is it's the same thing. There, there's no logo. There's no contact information. There's no um, there's no audience definition, right? That they're, As you can see, it looks to me that they're adding, that they're trying to focus on homes. And they do the two hours, two, two, two hours, two mates, etc. That's clear. But then what I don't like is that there's no contact information. It's not personable they are listing a bunch of different things so when they when they list this many items when when a business list this many items as a customer it makes me wonder okay so these are the only things that they're going to do for me i don't see myself so first of all now i have to go through the list and see and see if that applies to my house Okay, do I need my refrigerator clean? Okay, let me go check my refrigerator. Do I need this? Okay, let me go check that. Okay, let me go check that. Okay, yes, it looks like I need all of that, but I also need something else, but it's not listed here. So, oh crap, okay, I need to call them. So now I'm a little, I'm a little annoyed, typical millennial client. I'm a little annoyed that, that this promotion seems like it's only for specific things. I need to call and ask, hey, can, can you do this? Uh, okay, cool. So. Okay, so now, oh, you don't? Okay, so never mind. Thank you, bye, right? Um, but even if that was the case, even if I'm not upset having to call, there's no contact information. There's no contact information. Also, they're trying to get a little tricky with the services, right? So it's two hours, two hours, two mates, two mates, three hours, two mates, four hours. But then at the bottom, right here in the corner, they have additional charges. So they have the refrigerator, right? Out wipe and polish. So they're cleaning my refrigerator, but they're only wiping the outside of it. If I want the inside of it cleaned, I need to pay extra. So instead of being 60, like let's say I need my kitchen clean. I just need my kitchen, right? What are they gonna do in my kitchen for two hours? Wipe the counters? Wipe the cabinets from the outside? Mop? 
and clean the refrigerator from the outside. How is that worth 70 bucks for me? I can probably get that done in 30 minutes. If I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay for something that I cannot do or that will take me longer, right? The actual value. So that's where you know and your customer um, plays into factor, right? If you, if you are addressing, if you have a goal of converting and selling to a stay-at-home mom, you have to have a different type of flyer. If you have a goal of converting a single, the single parent or the busy professional, you have to have different flyers for that. So that we go back to having one goal, knowing your audience and avoiding jargon, right? In this case, they're all over the place. They're listing, itemizing the things that they do. So a, a general potential customer, a generic potential customer may may assume that what's listed here is what, what you do. And if, if it's not listed, you don't do it. Oh, by the way, if you actually want value, you have to pay extra, right? Um, you have to pay $5 for each, $3 for blinds, the windows. That, that's, that's not okay. That, that, so essentially, what is a maid going to do for two hours if I hire somebody? Two people, two people, two hours is a lot of time. That's four hours of labor. And assuming that they're not taking their time and being slow pokes, just because I happen to own a cleaning company as well um, and have worked with many other cleaning companies, I can tell you that two people for two hours is a hell of a lot, a lot of time. Um, and if this is not included, then it makes me wonder that whatever company this is, what are they doing? They're just charging you to show up. And then if you want some actual service, um, you got to pay extra. So that's not cool. Okay. So um, don't use jargon. Minimizing the intrusion. Okay. So a good example is minimizing the intrusion. You're interrupting already, right? You're, 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 you're going to, you're, you're approaching someone and you're interrupting their day. So I like, I like what this company tried to do. And this is a real flyer, by the way, but I, I like what they try to do. It, from the pictures, they're helping me understand that this company does something with the home. Okay, check. But then, okay, so the, 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 main, the main title, the header for the flyer, it says Spread the Love Janitorial LLC. So I'm assuming that's the name. So, okay, so they do janitorial, but then wait a minute, janitorial? As a, as a typical customer, I know that janitorial is not the word that you would use for house cleaning, right? For a maid service, for a, a home cleaning service. So why do they have uh, pictures of homes, which seem to me like they're also luxury homes, um, when, they're, when their business is janitorial? Okay, so, okay, I'll read into it a little bit more. So, okay, so let me get some more information. Maybe, they're, maybe they're, they do clarify it. But then as I go into it, experience clean with care first of all experience is, has a typo as you can see um it's misspelled so experience clean with care okay so maybe that's their that's their motto that's their 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 um their tagline or or i don't know so spread the love janitorial then that seems to me almost like a like a tagline their tagline is a it's a business name then they have a tagline here okay so, so that doesn't tell me anything experience clean with care I, even if that in itself doesn't even mean anything. So it's just it's just jargon, right? It's just it's just fluff. So let me go back, okay, and read over here. Making your business shine. Okay, so so they do businesses. Right? But it's just another jargon, it's just another quote. It's just fluff. It's fluff. This is fluff. This is fluff. I haven't seen any value yet. Okay. So counting us to deliver great results at reasonable rate. Okay, cool. So they seem to be affordable. But what is it that they do? Are they doing janitorial for commercial or are they residential cleaners? Which one is it? Uh, with the years of experience and an excellent team, we are confident that we can turn your dream project into reality. So that's great. I, I kind of like this with years of experience. So they're, they're, they're trying to reach into the personal, right? And, and at the same time, reach the heart, reach the logic. They have already reached the um my wallet but so far it's just fluff it's just jargon they try to simplify they, they, so they know that they're interrupting my day they're they're, they're they're interrupting my my um you know whatever i'm doing my, my my schedule with a flyer with a post um whatever the case may be so they're trying to make the 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 segue from interruption to a quick conversation like hey but hey hey um we are spread the love janitorial 
um, we have a lot of years of experience. We uh, we are very efficient and affordable at making your business shine. Um, consider us like they're doing the super quick here. Now you can go back to to you know go about your day. The only problem is that this is the, although although they went for simplicity to minimize the interruption, which I love. They have conflicting um, value propositions, right? The pictures uh, have luxury homes, which unless their unless their target market, their target audience, and their goal for this ad is to capture um, luxury homeowners, a lot of people may not be able to relate to the luxury shown in these pictures. So, so again, know your audience. Um, but the fact is, is that the pictures speak luxury homes. The words, the if you take the fluff out, um, they are approaching and 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 trying to reach businesses. So they have that confliction going on. Um, but as far as as far as minimizing the interruption, they did a good job. Let me show you something that I would have done, or something that I do as far as inter, uh, minimizing the interruption. This is a this is a flyer, and and, and it was literally a flyer. Um, uh, you know, eight and a half by eleven. Print it out in color. Fold it, uh, and fold it in in three in three parts, and um, can we canvas? We send it out to canvas um, uh, homes and certain parking lots of shopping centers for our target audience. But this is an inter this is an interruption piece that segues into the inbound. Um, and remember that I had mentioned that inbound is you're the expert. People come to you outbound. You're reaching out and interrupting them and telling them that you're the expert and then trying to sell them this piece. Although it, it, it exists on the outbound, it was like a like a mesh of both inbound and outbound. So we interrupted their, interrupted their day not to sell them anything. What we did is we spend the money to prove or to or to paint ourselves um, to portray ourselves as the experts. So, so that's what this goal was. How do we interrupt somebody's day with outbound um, and segue into the inbound so that because they've seen us as an expert. So so um, the target audience was a home, homeowners um, and people that don't really have the time or don't want to clean themselves. So what we did is we created some tips, right? So we made this flyer. And it just has a few simple tips, you know, how to clean, how to clean things around the house. Um, house cleaning tips by Honest Mates. The logo and the contact information. The 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 cleaning, um, the cleaning tips are basic, but the 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 idea is that you you get this flyer, you take it home. As you try and you maybe consider doing them around your house, you may actually not want to do it because you're lazy. Maybe you start realizing how bad your house actually is, so you decide to just. Um, call a company and that company will be us because we gave you the tips so you know we know how to clean we've already kind of established that you can trust us a little bit as far as us knowing how to clean your house because we provided this piece of a, a, a checklist um, you know little little tips um, and so now instead of we minimize interruption and convert it into them seeing us an expert and then they coming to us because they know we're an expert. So so this is one way to minimize an interruption. Um, and as you can see, we address everything. The colors are friendly. The the text is minimal, right? We don't have a bunch of things that we can do. We don't have any of that. Uh, um, we have the logo. Um, we, we are establishing rapport. We're making the contact information super, super accessible. Um, we, we are letting them know that, that the company are experts. We have relatable pictures of houses that people that typical people have um, and we included an empty house uh, picture so that they uh, hey if your house is empty you know also we'll take care of it anything with a house um, but as you can see I mean we are just approaching it as a, a, a courtesy flyer the um, super simple anyway so that's how you minimize the interruption um, let me see if we address the wallet on this one. Okay, I think we did. So so with this ad, which this is an ad that we designed, I designed this ad. 
um, I address the wallet with a 200% money back guarantee. So with uh, what I keep doing this. So with a 200% guarantee, if somebody does decide to hire, either they're going to be happy or they keep the service, of course, and they won't be charged. So I address the head, the emotions, the wallet, the tactics and the relationships. Uh, we have relationships. People can trust us. Um, the tactics in this case, it was just nothing but tips. And we, we address everything else through personal branding, consistent to the website, consistent to what I'm telling you about. Um, so this is one way. Another way is um, through this. Let me show you. This is the outside of a trifold. This is the inside of a trifold. So as you can see, this is the outside. This is this was done so that when somebody goes and knocks into a, a home, um, they will see that it's for a cleaning company. This is a way to minimize the introduction, the interruption, and give them an extra reason for them to keep the flyer. And I'll explain. Mm -mm. Let's see. All right, all right. Let's see real quick. Mm -mm. Let's see, where do I have it? right here okay so in this ad um, like I said we gave them a reason to keep so we we interrupted we interrupted their their day uh, we knock on their home and this is folded um, do I have a, a one of them here but it, it's folded so that you see this part right so right off the bat we're introducing the brand we know our target audience Typical home, stay at, you know, a mom, um, you know, that typically does the cleaning herself. If she looks at the bag, the, her information is there. If she opens it, she'll see that there's an offer, there's the wallet approach, there's the contact, there's a contact, there's a contact, and there's contact here. So again, I'm not being repetitive with the services, I'm being repetitive with my contact information. And that's done here. Repeat your contact information. Always repeat your contact information. Make it easy for them to know where and how to contact you. Um, if, if somebody was to look at the back, they see that we're pet friendly. See, we made we made the flyer personable. A lot of people have pets, and we are addressing their wallet. We are addressing their heart, their family, their safety. Um, and this is just from the outside of the of the brochure now if let's say that we knock on the door and they say no you know what i'm sorry i don't clean um or we already have a, a a cleaning lady then this flyer was intended to do two things minimize the interruption hey we're honest mates um we're just you know introducing ourselves uh letting you know that we have an offer and if you happen to not be interested in an offer for cleaning service well, there's, there are some other offers from local businesses that may interest you, right? There's a tax preparation business, there's a window tinting, there's a, a graphic design, there's a legal services, um, uh, insurance, etc. Feel free to keep it. It's not just for house cleaning, it's not just for us. We're not selfish that way. Here's a flyer, you can keep it. It's got promotions of other kinds. So we just gave them another reason for why keeping that flyer. And the goal of that is is so that if the goal for this flyer was only to introduce ourselves and get into a home um, and find ways so that even if we get the wrong person in the home, hopefully the plan is so that it, it increases our chances of even that wrong person will still keep the flyer, go inside, put it in the in the kitchen table, then then when the right person stumbles on it, they're gonna have. Uh, they're going to be the one that calls us instead of a flyer just going straight to the trash. We're giving them various reasons of why keeping why keeping this flyer because there's many, various reasons there. 
um, so that we stay inside of their home. Eventually, one person at a time will stumble upon the flyer until the right person at the right time will give us a call. And that's what the, that literally that's what this brochure trifold was all about. Um, and we it, we made it so that it was it, they printed it on a very nice thick stock paper. Um, it was in color. Uh, the the image the the everything was very professional. Um, so this is an example of a flyer that we did. If you were to if you were to hire somebody like me again, a decorator versus a painter, a graphic marketer. Somebody that understands inbound and outbound marketing, advertising, print, everything, the 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 customer persona versus a graphic designer, right? You're gonna get this type of work. You're not just gonna get some sort of flyer that is not gonna generate or that people are not gonna have nice things to comment on. Um, here is another example of a a flyer that I did, and this one uh, we were consistent with the branding, so it's a little different. Um, but as you can see, it's still very minimal. Again, we're interrupting their day. We don't want to give them homework. We don't want to give them a lot to go through and read so that they decipher what the hell it is that we do and try to find the value. We are sacrificing that, that on our end, minimizing our goal, uh, focusing on one single audience and providing as much clear value as we can and, and, and being efficient with the wording, being efficient with the placement, with the white negative space, making it friendly so that they don't feel like it's a it's cumbersome to go through the flyer or the trifold in this case. It's just minimal reading. The outside, uh, the outside of the of of the trifold, obviously focuses on clinic, clinic medical cleaning. So right off the bat, you can assume where this trifolds went to, clinics. If you look at the back, you see OSHA, you see eco friendly, you see you see the jargon specific. But in this case, it's not jargon. There are words. Um, that that industry will definitely know and that they not only will know, but they care about. So it's a, it's different than saying, um, hey, we're OSHA certified, we're, we're IJCA certified to a homeowner, right? Homeowner doesn't care. Saying like you're truck mounted versus whatever else mounted when a carpet cleaner. Um, so we're very, very specific. And again, we're consistent with the contact information and the branding. The, the branding is here, branding is here, branding is here. Three parts of the page. It doesn't matter how you're looking at it. Contact information is right there. There's quotes. We're making it personable. There's a picture. It, it, it knows our target audience. Um, and we are addressing the wallet and the heart. So that's the outside of it. The inside of it is, let me pop it open. Let's launch this real quick. Okay. So the inside of it does the exact same thing. Um, right? So we are specifying the things that we can do inside of a clinic and there's different kinds of clinics right um there's there's therapy there's there's dental there's doctor there's surgery there's all kinds of things so we are addressing the different things the equipment cleaning the maintenance doctors have offices secretaries etc so this focuses on a single client clientele and and it just lists various things of of how some of the service um may go about right so they they, they do restroom cleaning the disinfecting they broke it down they do floor clear floor care here's an here's a, a very brief example of of what it is that we can do um, and then we made it personable again there's the logo there's the contact information um the logo is back here again there's a picture right and it's in the about us section so as a as a as a reader of this flyer i would assume that that's the owner that's a person who wrote it um and Again, certification, um, we're addressing our target audience with different would-be jargon specific items, but because we they are specifically for that clientele, they are no longer considered jargon. They're specific to what it is that they would be looking for. Um, anyway, so it's just a quick example. And, and again, it's you have to know your audience and you have to know your target. Um, but we we minimize the intrusion. We make it easy for them to read. We were intentional. We we're personable. We leverage the brand. And um, I I put minimize intrusion twice because it is very important. It's like super super important. Um, and we made the conversion easy. Again, the way you make the conversion easy is by thinking of your funnel. Right. 
you have your funnel somebody and i'll and i'll make a video on that too but um when you are introducing yourself you have somebody at the top of the funnel and then within that interruption within that flyer you have to work them down the funnel to where first you they know about yourself then you you expose them to a possible need that they have right and then you introduce yourself as the expert and then you sell them so that's what a funnel is right so let, let me write it down so let, let me add it here you introduce yourself why is my computer freezing a little right you introduce yourself expose their problem actually let me make that into another list you expose their problem then um, you introduce yourself as expert slash solution and then you go for sale you pitch them hopefully converting them if you don't convert them You repeat the cycle with inbound approach and the inbound approach is um is is very very i'm gonna say complex but it's not hard you just have to assume different things as you go you have to have a single goal you have to you have to you have to it's complex but it's not difficult so you introduce yourself you introduce and expose the problem that they may be having introduce the idea of how you can solve it and why they should hire you and then you ask you go for the sale. If you, if they say no, right? That's where you have to think inbound. Okay, I'm introducing. Uh, okay, so how about maybe I can get your email? Um, if I can add you to an email list, I can send you little tidbits, little by little. Eventually, you're converting them. It'll come to the point to where they they will hire you. You're inbound, so you're you're repeating the cycle. Now you're just doing it through email. If that doesn't work through email, same thing. Or maybe you you send an email. You send then you, uh, I'll go I'll go through a video on that separately. But again, you convert from outbound into inbound. A lot of people, a lot of business owners like you may may go for the outbound interruption. If somebody says no, you say, ah, okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay, I'll try again later um, with another outbound. But no, you should use outbound to get people so you can build your inbound. And that's what that video will be about. I'll make another video on that. Um, anyway, um, again, this video was how to design flyers that actually sell. If you have any questions, any comments, any thoughts, uh, I'll be sharing this on YouTube. And then I'll, so you, if, you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, drop some comments below, hit like um, and subscribe. And or if you're seeing this in our group, um, same thing, let me know your questions, let me know your thoughts. You know that our group is here to help each other. You can ask any questions and I'll address them and try to help you as much as I can. Thank you.